last year and a half, what do you see? <laughs> you know, the Fed's taken the Fed funds rate down to zero. I mean, essentially their target is zero to 0.25%. And mortgage rates have stayed. I mean, they're very, very attractive, but they haven't followed suit, if you will, because there's been a huge disconnect um, with respect to the secondary mortgage market. And essentially, um, the private secondary market really disappeared. You know, there's a, a, a risk premium, if you will, that investors demand to hold uh, mortgage securities as opposed to, let's say, treasury securities. And what happened when we went into this financial uh, crisis is it went from about a 1% average to about a 3% uh, three percent average because investors didn't want to hold anything that looked anything like a mortgage and especially if it looked good there was so much mortgage fraud out there that they didn't really believe it so essentially if we didn't have Fannie and Freddie and the FHA and the VA in the housing market right now we wouldn't really have much of a housing market because they've been so scared. So I see I'm going to be competing with the landscapers out there, so I'll try to, <laughs> try to be more animated here. Um, here's just a look at that spread I was talking um, about earlier, the 30-year um, uh, fixed rate um, uh, uh, conventional in blue and the uh, non-conforming jumbo uh, in green, and you can see in the fall of 2008 that that spread got above 3%, and it's come back down to normal only because of the, um, you know, well, not only, but because of the government intervention through the Fed and the Treasury uh, purchasing mortgage-backed securities and kind of getting things back in order again, and it, it certainly is, is happening. The one area that is going to be lagging uh, in terms of coming out of this recovery is, is the commercial uh, market. This is just a graph that shows you the percent of commercial properties that are in trouble. Those loans tend to be either a five-year or 10-year maturity as they are coming due. Many of those properties are underwater, being taken back by their banks. And I don't think I have it in here, but there was another chart that showed that the commercial secondary mortgage market essentially disappeared <laughs> in 2009. I mean, there just wasn't any security, securitization going on at all. And what that means for the investment community is the opportunities in commercial property are unbelievable. You know, if you've got cash, you have some almost 100% sure bets going on um, in, in investing in, in these properties. And I involved in, I'm involved in a number of groups in Los Angeles that have a lot of those kind of players in it, and it really is a is a is a sweet spot. So, anyway, let me let me move on and just kind of summarize where we see uh, 2010 and 2011. About a three percent growth rate in 2010, but still with a relatively high unemployment rate for the year of 9.8 percent and a net pullback in jobs, nothing like we saw in 2009, but still um, still about 0.7 percent. Uh, CPI about about 2 percent, which is kind of what we saw um, in May, and real disposable income up at about a 1.1 percent rate. So we have an economy that's showing improvement, but this is going to be um, a slow, sustained uh, workout. Uh, economists are um, known for throwing um, alphabet um, and letters of the alphabet out to describe recovery. So you've got you know a W or a U or an L or a V. This is not a V. <laughs> this is going to be a U with a very long um, uh, low point and for the economy and for um, many parts of that, uh, many parts but not all um, of the housing market. Here's a look at California and it's essentially um, same sign as the nation uh, with the um, understanding that we had, as I mentioned earlier, more action going on in the housing market. For example, when the um, uh, when the kind of subprime peaked and then started to get into trouble, what was the first county in California that started to show cracks in their labor market? Well, it was Orange County, because that's where a number of the subprime uh, companies were located, as well as uh, quite a few of the California uh, builders. So they were really kind of leading, um, uh, leading the way in, in, that, um, in that respect. Um, uh, one percent uh, population growth, pretty much flat. Disposable income real about 
about 1%. And then as we look through to 2011, we see definitely a better environment, but more of an incremental improvement, not a, we've turned the corner and we're back to whatever the new normal uh, looks like. That's going to take a, a couple of years. Okay, let's talk about what we all like like to spend our time doing, California real estate market. This is a uh, chart of uh, home sales, existing single family home sales in California. It starts in 1970. The, um, the black line is the median home price in California. So this is kind of a, a 30,000 altitude view of the last 40 years to kind of compare and contrast real estate cycles. So if you look at the late 70s, early 80s, it took five years for the market to drop peak to trough, sales-wise, 61%. And the median home price statewide did not drop. It flattened out, it did not drop. In the late 80s, early 90s, it again took five years for the market to drop peak to trough, sales-wise, a drop of 25%. And the median actually declined. In fact, if you look at the data for California, Six of the 10 years in the 90s, the statewide median dropped. That's why this kind of idea that housing prices don't go down always mystified me because we've, we've seen it really in our, in our lifetime, but just not to the degree we've, we're seeing it now. Um, this time around, it took only three years for the market to drop, 44% peak to drop, three years, and the median home price in two years dropped over 50%. So that is, it, in a nutshell, what, what something that we have never, ever seen before. I used to say, I will never say again, I used to say housing prices are sticky on the way down because they were, you know? And the idea was, if you were a discretionary seller and the market wasn't gonna bring you what you thought your home was worth, you would discretionarily decide to wait it out. And that's what happened. This time around, you had a whole slew of people who were not discretionary sellers. They were in foreclosure, they couldn't make their payments, and they had to be out the door. So that really was the muscle behind this tremendous drop in, in prices. The impact on the industry has been significant. I have been with CAR for 26 years. It's been an amazing ride. I have quite a few really very close friends who are in the, in the industry. Uh, they're telling me they're working twice as hard for less than half their income. They are. <laughs> They are, this is a look at dollar volume. Uh, it's taken five years, it's dropped over 50%, and it's plateauing um, in uh, 2010, and next year, probably flat, uh, probably flat as well. So there's been a big hit uh, in terms of dollar volume as well. Here's a look at monthly data, kind of tracking the cycle um, in a little bit more detail. If you look at 02 to 05, kind of the dark blue to the magenta, you can see the housing boom in California, that we had quite a few months where the sales pace was over 600,000. Uh, by the fall of 2007, we were running at a pace of around 275,000. And 2008 and 2009, the market came roaring back in the de-stressed properties. REO foreclosure, um, short sales, although that's, you know, those, those have always been challenged. But the de-stressed market boomed because those areas had price declines of 60, 70, 80 percent. And again, I'm looking at the inland parts of California starting in San Diego and going all the way up north of of Sacramento. What, what was it about those areas? Well, dirt was cheap. There was a lot of new construction and there were a lot of sales to households who had been priced out of the coast and were essentially handed a mortgage, right? Uh, they thought probably, well, when this instrument adjusts in two to three years, I'll, I'll be able to refi easy. Look how easy this process was this time around or I'll be able to sell and gain equity because look at how amazing the market is. Well, by the time this started to happen, those two options weren't available, and so they had to, you know, kind of just a, a thumbnail. Um, year to date, um, we're running about five and a half percent below the same period last year. The biggest challenge in the market is the lack of inventory at the moderate and low end distressed market. Uh, I think in May, sales in Riverside, San Bernardino were off uh, 20 or 25 percent 
from May of a year ago, and it's not that the demand's not there. I mean, I know brokers who say their agents have file folders with buyers who are ready to go, <laughs> but that just just properties aren't there. And I'll be saying a little bit about shadow inventory in, in just a minute. The statewide